Welcome to Carver Conversations, a Sabretooth podcast. I'm your host, Tiff Marchand from Night Carver Designs. And today on the show, I have Ella Fielding. She is an amazing sculptor, chainsaw artist, and carver, and she makes these crazy huge things. So check out our conversation. We had a great time getting to know each other and talking about art. Enjoy. And if you're looking to go ahead and grab some burrs this week, use our code EM2CO in all caps to save 10%. And don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. Once a month, a 25% off coupon will come out. It is good for your entire order and it is only valid for 24 hours. So you're not gonna wanna miss it. Sign up today and you'll get a preview of all the new tools and episodes that we have coming out for the show. So enjoy the episode and have a great day. Thank you for coming on to the show. Um, It's super loose. There's no script. There's no set questions. It's literally just a conversation to get to know you and to kind of find out how you got into carving and and what you're up to now. Like I, you were just filming, right? You you had a show that just came out not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. I did a show that was called Kings of the Wood and that came out, um, at Christmas time but yeah obviously it did well enough that they've commissioned a second series so we've just finished filming the second series oh sweet so, yeah so it's kind of lots of makers so it's not just wood this time um and but I'm the only chainsaw carver oh that's awesome so yeah. the first season was it just like a bunch of chainsaw carvers or was it a variety no, it's lots of woodworkers and um and some metal workers as well so kind of making the premise is that we make nice things for lovely people basically and just thank them for doing something like a great job of oh, whatever it is awesome. that they're doing yeah it's amazing I've met some incredibly inspirational people and you kind of go um I'm just making stuff and you're there just <laughs> you know <laughs> giving yeah. all this to the world so um but yeah it's really life affirming especially at the moment when um you know there's a lot of things that feel sad in the world and it's quite nice to be grounded and meet people that are like working their asses off and yeah. doing a brilliant job so I think that was that was really positive that's great no that is that's like how good do you feel like you're doing this for these people but then you're also you're getting to chainsaw carve on tv yeah it's like yeah yeah, exactly it's like this super like exciting experience and then you also have this like warm feeling in your heart like that's amazing yeah it's a pretty good pretty good deal yeah good for you (laughs) thank you yeah no it's really good So yeah, so that's been um, really, really hectic and busy and fun though. But yeah, the stuff that we've managed to make is, I cannot wait till it comes out so I can start sharing what I've made. Mm. Um, Annoyingly, I can't say anything about them, but yeah, they're they're just, yeah, really good fun, really fun projects. Yeah, but it's exciting though, because like now as it airs, you get to like reveal these things and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. hundred percent. So when you're not filming, are you you carving commissions on the side? Is that? Yeah, so I'm solely commission based. Um, I tried a little bit when I was younger doing, um, going to fairs and stuff and it just never really, I, 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 it wasn't the right place for me and my work, it seemed. Yeah. Um, uh, and also I seem to make absolutely massive things. So <laughs> it's I was quite handy. Say- those ducks <laughs> yeah <laughs> they were pretty big so huge it's like you're just like tiny little thing next to them like in the picture it's like yeah. It's amazing <laughs> yeah exactly it does yeah so by just doing commissions it means I get to you know work on big projects and I know what I'm doing and I've already had the conversation about money and you know and all of that before so it sort of means it all makes it work a bit better in my world the way I work so yeah yeah it works for me and people know that you can do those big pieces so like of course they're gonna yeah. find you like oh well she has experience. yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so it's good yeah I really like it um and though in the winter when it's like absolutely really raining and stuff, you're like, <laughs> why am I up scaffolding when the snow's hitting me in the face? But you know, it comes with that's part of the job in it. I was gonna say, I can imagine the metal on those like bars have to be so cold as you're like leaning yeah. on them. 
Yeah, you have to like blowtorch them to sort of unclip them at the end <laughs> oh, of the vlog. Like the melt or snow. <laughs> you got the technique down. You're like, all right, get the yeah. torches. Yeah, exactly. You just get a blowtorch. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> do you like own your own scaffolding and stuff? Like, do you have all that supply, or do you rent it for each job? I just each... get it hired because in the end, I, I used to use. I used to drive with it as well, and I was like, it's so annoying having to put. And yeah. also, I don't. I don't scaffolding at my house you know so now I just hire it for each job good I I, I was gonna say that's so much easier I was wondering I'm like she has yeah. to like lug all this stuff around now my tools are enough as it is yes. <laughs> let alone like then adding in all the stuff and as I've like got uh, like older I've realized also like you know the cleanup is massive but you know there's just mm -hmm. with that big a tree is there's that much waste do you know what I mean there's a yeah, lot yeah. that comes yeah, off exactly what do you I've do with all that? <laughs> well, I've got better at like employing people. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I'll get some people to come and take it away. Cause it's just like, that's the whole day's clear up in itself sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It's wicked smart. Kind of streamlining how it all works. Well, you've been doing this for a while. Cause I scrolled to your page, like all the way down and it was uh, 2012 was your last, like your first post that I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing it a long time. So I've been doing it probably professionally, like as in not having any other jobs for like eight years, maybe 10 years, but nice. I start maybe more actually, 10 years probably. Um, but I started like 15 years ago. Um, cool. Yeah, so I've been doing it forever, basically. It's the only job I've basically had. <laughs> Love that. What <laughs> made you pick yeah. up the chainsaw? Um, well, I'd seen, a, I did a degree in sculpture and while I was doing my degree, I sort of hadn't really connected with any materials particularly. Um, I kept experiment. I did a bit of ceramics. That was fun. I um, love that. I love ceramics. It's I hung amazing. out with a potter last night for my other podcast and it was just so nice. Oh, no. Yeah, I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> They're very gentle. Yeah. It's potty with a very like, I think because it's such a, you have to have such patience. It's it's quite a tranquil, meditative mm -hmm. making process. So I think it's probably just very, like, calming. Yeah. Stressful, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think, um, yeah. So, I, yeah. And, I, um, and in the last year of my degree, I ended up, basically, I'm dyslexic. I don't love writing overly. And um, yeah. there was an option where you could either do a dissertation or you could work with a practicing artist and basically keep a diary. And I was oh, like, amazing. Yeah, oh, sure. I'll do that one. And that sounds great. And um, and I'd been to Glastonbury a few years. I, my parents used to take me when I was a kid to the festival. Oh, and yeah. um, I'd seen a carving there and it sort of sat in my brain. And then when they said you could work with a practicing artist, I was like, oh, I wonder if I can find out who those people are. And I found out who'd made the carving at Glastonbury and then reached out and asked if I could like hang out with them and stuff. Um, and they said yes. And so, and they were the people who first got me into carving. That's amazing. Yeah, because I was gonna say, they did offer that at university. Like, I didn't see that as yeah, like a major. No. I was like, that's I, interesting. <laughs> yeah. I had to fight quite hard actually to, um, to do it because it's not fine art exactly. And it's, you know, or it wasn't, it was it was just logistically as well like where are you going to be what you know how does this work but luckily we had um a bit of big car park and so i was just in the car park basically and everyone else was fighting for space in the last year of uni and i was like i've got this whole <laughs> you've got all this area <laughs> yeah i've got trees and car parks i'm happy so yeah it was brilliant but it was yeah. right in the center of london so and they'd get this bus going past and you'd be like <laughs> see like as they stop that's really cool though because because you imagine how many people that you were inspiring that were just driving by yeah uh, like, oh I've always wanted to try that look at her yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah 100 yeah, percent. I love it um yeah and, I, and it's just like it's just one of those things I think I just got the bug for it it's it you know when you find you can do something and you're good at it it's addictive mm -hmm. isn't it, it kind completely. of goes, yeah, I, really I had the same to... story like with like uh taking routers and carving wood yeah I, like, I saw it at the fair like the local fair and I I kept seeing it every year and I'm like I can do that like I can make the designs because I already had a degree in graphic design so I'm like I know oh, how to do cool. the art 
I'm like, yeah. so I'm like, I could easily just pick up the tools and carve. And then once I started that, I mean, look where I am now. Like it's my job. Yeah. 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 Job, you know? yeah, yeah. Actually it makes sense to a graphic designer because your work is very graphic, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. very cartoonish, yeah, heavy black lines. Yeah. I used to get yelled at in college for that because I guess <laughs> you're in painting class and you're supposed to be having all these soft lines and it's supposed to be very delicate. And here I am like big, bold black lines and all of my stuff. And they're like, that's not yeah. fine art. I'm like, I don't want to make fine oh, art. That's <laughs> yeah. That's how they, that's how they were telling me like, that's, oh, but I just kept, I just kept with it. <laughs> I'm like, it works. Oh, yeah. It works. Exactly. Like you, you know, you've got to be yourself. Like, mm-hmm. It's, I always have to remind myself of that too. Like, you know, you see loads of other carvers and you're like, oh my God, you're amazing. And then yeah. you're like, but they're yeah. amazing at being them and I have to just keep being me. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's sort of mm-hmm. like, that's the creative, like permanent battle. I think where you're like, you have to remember to be you when you're making, but yes. So, yeah, we've just, so I've just been doing it ever since basically. And it's just been super fun. Like, and my husband actually, when I got with my partner, um, because I'd been like knocking about with chainsaws, but I had just like a really crappy one. And then when I first met him, I think I met him in um, like August or something. And the first present, like it was, you know, Christmas came. Yeah. He gave me a carving chainsaw for Christmas. And I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> You're a keeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was also like the first time I'd had like the proper tool, the proper right. one. And um you know, not just a, like a really basic crap saw. Mm-hmm. And it just made such a difference. And having the carving bar on it just suddenly gave, it just opened up my eyes to like what having proper tools can do and the variety of them and stuff. So um, yeah, that, that meant I could then accept jobs because I felt I could say yes to them and I could do them. Sometimes it does help like when you find the partner that supports you and they know what you yeah. really need, but you're too cheap to buy it for yourself. Yes. <laughs> And they just like do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> my it husband did so the same good. thing for me too. I was like, okay, all right, thank you. This has just changed my whole world. You know? Yeah. What did he give you? A brand new iMac. So, ah. Yeah. Because yeah. I was using my old one and it was so slow and nothing was working. And I think it just doesn't. I just forget. I just. I don't really, I'm not very materialistic and I just forget you can just buy stuff. You can just buy a new one. Yeah. Just get a new one. That's fine. You can do that. (laughs) Well, it's those things too. If it's it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, that whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So people are, (laughs) why not have two or three of them? We forget yeah, that option. Well, I've now changed my tune. I now have <laughs> so many chainsaws and so many like, you know, bits like angle grinders so you can have all the different attachments on it and not have to keep taking off and put on a different one. I was yes. like, just have more and then it's fine. So yeah, yeah now I've got a huge array. <laughs> my mom asked me like, why do you need so many of those? And that was the reason. It's like, so I can have them all preloaded. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can flick between. It's great. It makes mm-hmm. it so much easier. I think they create like because often I like persevere with the route, like say with a burr head on the end, and I'm like, it's not quite the right one, but I can't be able yeah. to change it right. You know, and then you're like, no, you need to flick between. So yeah, actually yeah, saying this, I should probably get myself a second die grind. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Another tool list to buy. <laughs> you need it for the show you know so that's that's your excuse exactly <laughs> i need it to just be a little bit faster a little faster. Yeah, yeah 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 exactly exactly <laughs> uh i really hope the show does well actually this time i mean i'm sure it will because it did all right last time but um i love the idea of like other people seeing you know a carver and a female carver and being like oh okay cool maybe I could do that too and I think like we us women are not very good at being um as visible or like put or like try I don't know I think there's less women carvers that put themselves out there yes there's a lot of women carvers Mm -hmm. lots of them they just seem to be I don't know they're just I don't know so yeah I love the idea of like putting that face forward and showing that you know there's 
people doing it and and hope because a lot of, I know in America it's big and in the UK it's big too but it's big within its own scene yes. and yes. like a lot of people are like oh I didn't even know that was a thing so I think getting that into the consciousness of like people who are not in my world you know are like I think that's really good because I think chainsaw carving as a as a as a community and as a job is uh, so good and I think people don't realize that you can get a tree made into something and they often think oh the tree's died I need to get rid of it and right. it, uh, you know by seeing things like that you go oh maybe I should do that and get there into a sculpture instead because it's not even that much different well, it is a bit more different. Advice, but, you know, <laughs> grinding out a um, stump is still really expensive. It is, yeah. You're going to spend like four hundred bucks on that stump to get yeah. That stump so, to get like, grinder. you could spend a bit extra and have a sculpture instead. You know, and it's sort of then you've given the tree a new life, and you've like it's got another journey to go on. So I went to go try seeing your show because I wanted to watch it, and I don't think I can view it over here. Or I don't know where I can watch on- it. It's on Discovery Plus on the app. Discovery Plus? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's a funny one. It seems like on UK, it's on Quest in UK TV, but um, I don't know. I'm not yeah, sure over how here, to do Over here, they were like, no. Nope. <laughs> there's no, <Yeah>. there's <laughs> no like watch now button. It's like just description yeah. of the episodes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you're when you're uh, not chainsaw carving, what do you do? What do you like to get into? Um, I've been well, I've been doing a bit of paddle boarding and like I, li- I like being quite active. Like I'm a mum, so I've got two kids, and um, and they're just busy being kids, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is great. They're fun, and then um, yeah, just trying, yeah, being fitness, hanging out, seeing mates, and going to music and stuff like. I like Perfect. yeah same if I can get to some concerts throughout the year I'm happy it's difficult to yeah yeah I mean I think meeting up with like um other makers is just super important I think you know like I work on my own I think that was the other thing about doing it the show was that I could work it's just nice to be with other makers mm-hmm. and same like I went um last year no this year and um, to check out a carving competition. So I've never actually done them. So although I'm a carver, I'm not really, I haven't really been in the, like, in that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, so I went to a carving competition just to check it out and stuff and, and, um, and see if I might want to do one. And it was just so nice to be around. Like, I was like, oh my God, more carvers. Yes. And everyone's <laughs> like, knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, you know, and it was really nice hearing everyone chat and stuff. And I was like, ah. This feels good. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to one in uh, actually next month. So almost well, October. It's called yeah. the Makers Camp. It's in New York. And it's just a bunch of makers out there camping. About 500 oh, people really? camping out and making all day and stuff. So we're going to be yeah. powering all day. Yeah. Like it's going to be that's, so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm like where I live is sort of just outside London. And again, it's a bit there's not there's lots of artists, but there's definitely not that many chainsaw carvers. Although the one that is around the corner is Mike, Michael from oh, Man Jones. and His Dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was cool. So I met up with him and um, hang out and did a job together, which was really nice. I mean, and that's the first time I've actually near you. That's a pretty good yeah. person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a good yeah really good um and it's just yeah really nice to work with other carvers I mean when I first started I was working with a group called the tree pirates um and they were brilliant they're, they're great a lot of them are like timber frame well one of them was a timber framer so they've all kind of ended up carving um but they're not really round where I live so we sort of just haven't really worked together re- recently so it's yeah it's really nice to be able to hang out with other carvers and like yeah just pick up on each other's skills and stuff I think it's really important yeah. no that's, that's super important and I love like like you said these shows that are getting you to have that community feel and like 
I always say like, yeah. I say like my coworkers or like my yeah. maker community. So like yeah. yeah, all the people that I talk to all day on Instagram, those are my coworkers my throughout coworkers. the day. They keep me, they keep me going. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, definitely. And it's, yeah. And seeing what other people do, like, like I said about the competition, like I, I, I went and was like, holy crap these trees are massive to carve in two days like and what they end up with at the end of it I was like huh okay I'm pretty glad I came beforehand <laughs> to check it out so I know what I've got what I'm in for if I do it I would say are you gonna sign up for one I think I'd like to I think it's yeah. a good good thing to it's a good challenge isn't it I think it's a good thing to do I'm sure you can get Michael to join you and you guys can do it together it'd be fun <laughs> yeah. it's like come on man yeah <laughs> he's doing it already he just came second in it one the other day oh, awesome I love I love hearing all that I love seeing your guys stuff and like you said it's super impressive what they're knocking out in two days that might have taken like a whole month if it was like at home yeah it's unsustainable in real real life oh, yeah, like yeah, you'd burn out at that pace you know because it's so you look at it and you're like okay we'll do that for another client but like you just can't do it that for that yeah. long for that you know that sustained period like constantly but um but yeah they, they are really amazing what they come up with on the show do, are you given a decent amount of time since it's not like a, not like a competition yeah. show oh that's nice yeah yeah, yeah 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 yes thank god i could yeah the competition shows i'm like i'm amazed at how good everyone is because yeah. it's like you're supposed to know all the all of everything i yeah. don't know how you're <laughs> Be an expert in every field of whatever it is it's in you know um no thankfully we give enough time and also there's a lot of like stopping and starting for for the cameras and stuff so I had to add on a bit extra time thinking about that kind that, of yeah side of it so, so yeah you've got, like no, the, cool. the cushy job you get all those like little breaks in between camera setups <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> Although saying that, I did some late, I pulled some late nights because it's like, say it's it, got to be frustrating when you want to keep going. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And also like, you know, this is you saying this is my best face. This is what I'm going to do best. And it's like, oh my God, it's got to actually be the best thing you can do. You know, you, you're putting it out there and saying that you can do that stuff, you know, and so there was... I think in that way, it was a bit stressful because you're like, oh yeah, I just, when I say yeah, you have the cushy job, but it's really funny because <laughs> for me, the, those, those camera breaks would make me have anxiety. Like, okay, I want to keep going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was, yeah. It, yeah. There is that side of it. It's like <laughs> quite tough. <laughs> oh, I think that's lovely. I think that's such an amazing opportunity to have that. And it kind of changes kinda like, changes the people that know you so then the commissions you're going to be getting after the shows have to be increasing in complexity I assume or just more I guess so. yeah I guess so. the mine are already kind of pretty varied and pretty um yeah I'm, I'm I'm at a really good place of my making and who asked me to make stuff I get asked to do some really like because there's often a collaborate like when when a client comes they'll have a maybe a vague idea but like not necessarily fully formed thankfully because obviously I want to design it and yep. come up with my version of whatever it might be and it's sort of like a bit of back and forth and and then kind of end up with a design but I get a lot of free reign to be honest with I within their like you know they might say I would like something like this but often they don't know so then you can kind of detour them and have a conversation about how what, you know and end up with, with a design that's nice yeah, yeah. We, all, we all like a little creative freedom oh 100 percent. I couldn't do that 100%. <laughs> and also you've got to work with the tree as well like I very much feel you do have to respond to what is it you know mm -hmm. if there's a limb sticking out there you've got to make that work within it and you know and then obviously the grain's going to be doing something else so yeah and often as well sometimes you find there's like suddenly a massive rotten area or like whatever you've got to kind of work with that and make it work so there's yeah. always a bit of yeah. um free you've got to respond and troubleshoot around it anyway so the design has always got to be loose-ish because then you can I can imagine yeah yeah <laughs> and make it work. yeah <laughs> 
you've come across a lot of different things, I'm sure, over the years when it comes to that. I can imagine a lot of different surprises. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So much metal. <laughs> oh. So much metal in trees. Like, yeah, a lot. I bought a metal detector. I now do it before I start carving. If I, but some, it's always when I'm like, I forget. And that day when I forget, I find like a massive, I don't know, ancient nail in the center of the tree or something. You're like, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I never but. think of that. And somebody mentioned that like musket balls were in some uh, trees that they were carving. Oh, so they, no. Yeah, I'm like, that's crazy because the, yeah. the, the history that, you know, has happened with that tree. Yeah, that yeah, tree. 100%. Yeah. Like when somebody says they want <clears throat> me to carve a something that's on a boundary line or like a pathway you're like oh that's definitely going to have been used as a notice board you know that's going to oh, have lots yeah of, you know that sort of thing but it's part of what it is you just got to respond and you know no but I do like it, talking it, about that because if someone knew is going to go after this and they're not even thinking about metal you know what I mean yeah <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you just saved yeah. them a surprise, or they'll at least know yeah. what they ran into. <laughs> hmm. Right? Yeah. Right? The trees are amazing. They just grow around everything, you know, they absorb whatever's pushing against them. So, yep. like, you know, massive barbed wire fences have been like grown into the tree, or like my friend was carving and found like a ceramic box thing I think it was on like a phone line thing it must have oh, like wow. grown right in into somehow. it yeah and it like cut in and was like oh I thought I did a carving there was a brick in it <laughs> it's like grown around a brick it's okay. like oh we need you to start sharing videos of these things when you come upon them <laughs> <laughs> it's just often my face really cross just like, yeah exactly <laughs> now and the next however long sharpening <laughs> How did you find out about saber tooth spurs? Like, so you, you is it from the guy that you studied with? Um, yeah. So one of the guys, um, there's a guy called Rob Beckinsale, who's um just a delightful person and a really good carver. Um, and he had them, and I think, oh, yeah, I think, and then I was like, had a go. I just, I don't know. It's one of those things where I never really knew I needed them, and then was like, oh this is brilliant and now and then more recently I've been using them like they there's not any jobs where I've done where I haven't used them yeah they're clutch they're just so good yeah. <laughs> they're just I mean. really good mm -hmm. it's funny because it's one of those things that I fell in love with I think four or five years ago and mm. I've been talking about them but like now that obviously they work here like I talk about them a lot more and people are finally starting to discover them in like the scroll saw world like yeah and now they're buying them and they're like it's the game changer and i'm like i know oh, yeah yeah well actually this show, when i was on the show there's like because lots of furniture makers as well mm. and there's you know, the bum scoopy bit of a chair and then the, the the other guy, Alex, was like, oh, can I borrow one of your discs? I was like, yes, you can. And he, like, had a go and was like, oh, they're really good, aren't they? You know, it's like, it just takes material. And normally I think he'd be, like, I don't know, routering out a bit and then, yep. you know. And then, yep. it's, just, it's just, yeah, it's just one of those tools. That, and I, I bought myself the little ones for the for the Dremel. Yep. They're so good. Oh, yeah, just, yeah, I just literally use them all the time. So... Yep brilliant discovery isn't it nice it's like uh, and i'm guessing you have a, probably just a variety of shapes and sizes no yeah no. is there like yeah. one that you always have going Pretty, yeah the long thin one i tend to use a lot they're like with the brown the tip it's very, yeah, yeah 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 and um yeah that one i kind of just i don't know like there's a lot of like because you can do it for li lines and making yeah, you can kind of draw it, with it yeah 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 and because yeah. it cleans up at the same time just all those like fiddly little areas where you're like undercutting and trying to play with shadows and lights mm -hmm. and stuff and sort of run it under it seems to just separate what you've carved from the background you know so yeah, i use that, that release lot. yeah that relief yeah yeah and then i think the one that seems to i'm using a lot as well is the like round with a point like oh yeah like mm -hmm. a, a type one 
Um, yeah, I use that on all the time. I haven't tried any of the Whisper ones though yet. Mike, because Mike uses those a lot, I think, but I haven't tried them out yet. So, because I used to carve and then sand everything, and then with them, you're like, it's doing the same thing. You're carving yeah. and sanding it. You have like a little yeah. bit, like a tiny bit left. Oh, depending, because if you're using a lot of hardwoods, it's not going to leave as big as grooves. No, 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 exactly. Um, and yeah, so I, that's basically a lot of the finishing is on, is that bit. And then obviously I sand the larger areas and stuff, but um, yeah, no, they're really helpful. And just for like drawing, just because, you know, there's a, there is a, I mean, some carvers are amazing and they do all of their work solely with chainsaws. Great. They're Crazy. amazing. But also when you've got these, I'm like, well, I can put that down now. I can do it with the finishing with that. So you can save your arms a little bit too. Yes. <laughs> Mind you, the fuzzing from the from the dram like die yeah. grinder is I mean it's all pretty pretty savage on the body, but <laughs> it is, it is. I like I have an, I had like a three month break from doing any kind of like woodworking because I was like mm. preparing to switch my careers. So it was like a lot of computer work, right? And then I just have been like heavily getting into carving every day. And I'm like, ooh, ooh yeah, cool. gotta get working, gotta get back to the gym yeah, and yeah. lifting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, although the job is very, very, very physical, I think like doing, I try to do weight training and stuff anyway, because I just think you, you know, you need to be strong and strong everywhere. And it sort of helps me. Yeah just be better at my job I think no that makes a ton of sense like when we were talking about I'm like that really makes sense of why you concentrate on your fitness so much is mm. it's, it's part of your life like if you yeah it makes that, everything yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it helps everything else out for sure <laughs> yeah definitely definitely yeah it's just nice when you feel stronger you're like oh everything's much easier <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree so okay. yeah and it is, I mean, it's such a physical job. Like, I'm start, you know, it just is a very, very physical job. It's a pretty, you know, eight hours, like, hefting, chucking stuff around. So, yeah, yeah, just yeah. stamina as well. It's helpful to have, you know, that, that, yeah, to be fit. What, uh, do you have anything at your house that you've carved for yourself? I'm curious. Yeah, I've got a few things. I um, so I live with my mum and dad. We live with my. We, it's like it's a very big family household, <laughs> and, um, which is great. But so I've carved some things. We had a tree come down in their garden, and I've made an abstract um, kind of. I don't know what it is like. Just this sort of spire, like spike thing, but it's got like patterns around it and so. stuff. Like um, and then I've seen I've it. I might, yeah I think I must have put it up and then I've got a life-size deer as well like oh that's cool yeah which is fun so you're just poking just kind of like oh there's a deer <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine it's a addicting thing that people like who you've made stuff before always try to come back for more if they can I assume yeah <laughs> yeah 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 definitely because I would want a little collection. Like once you have one thing, it's nice. Because you're just like you stare at it all day. You're like, oh, it's like, yeah. What else, what else could I have in my yard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I've been so lucky as well. Like whenever, like I think doing the job I do, it's a very personal job, and each carving is it's a very intense process, and it's it's you know it means a lot to me, and I've been really lucky that pretty much all my clients it also means a lot to them too so mm -hmm. it always is really like I almost always have like a hug at the end of my carvings with my client <laughs> like we feel like we've shared something yes, do you know absolutely I mean? yeah yeah so it's really special I've been lucky that you know most mostly there it's a you know it is that it's received in a way that mm -hmm. I I hope it is so it's one of those things too yeah like we both make art that we give away you know so yeah. you want to make sure it's going to a good home. It's like, you're going to be. Yeah, sure. I've had like on, I, one or two occasions where someone was like, okay, thanks. And you're like, oh, 
that is not what I was expecting. Do you know what I mean? It sort of yeah. felt very strange. And I was like, but actually it's quite a good lesson. So like, it made me realise that I am actually incredibly lucky that in the main, you know, mm-hmm. it's a pretty, the pretty, you turn up and everyone's pretty happy you're there and then they're happy, done. you know, it's filled with happiness. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Is, a, is an incredibly lucky and brilliant thing to feel at the end of each day. No, that's an amazing that's thing. Amazing. I mean, I mean, to be able to be fulfilled every day like that's yeah that's glorious yeah. yeah yeah it is it yeah it is I have conversations with people sometimes they're like oh what do you do and they tell me and they're like you know just kind of live for the weekend and they're like what do you do <laughs> oh chins or cover they're like oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I tell I tell people whoever <laughs> finds it right away like yourself and I believe Michael actually found it too when he was like 14 or something yeah like, I do get jealous I'm like yeah because <laughs> it's like all those years I missed out but I'm like I've got it now it takes a lot of like either stupidity or balls you know to yeah, 100%. Kind of, you know not do a normal job and make it work and it is I think it's just fluke as well that it actually happens sometimes you know there's so many amazing artists that are yeah. incredible but don't seem to be able to make it their life or their living um which is really really hard and it's, there's it this, is it's this yeah and, so, and somehow chainsaw carving seems to slip in somehow and i was gonna say that that seems to be the way to go if you really want to be in that kind of a field where you're making art all day it seems yeah. like the smart it's, route to be honest and then if you want to deviate later you can but like to get in it seems like a really smart way it's crazy like it seems to be you know when like when I say how much it will be for a carving people uh, uh, maybe it's the materiality of it like maybe it's because it's such a physical thing Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it makes sense that it would take this long and it would cost that much whereas I think with something like a painting or a photograph like Mm -hmm. maybe people judge it purely on its material value you know and it's not that's not how it works it's not you know but it, it, to quantify a painting and to you know and to justify spending that much I think people seem to psychologically file it in a different place whereas yeah. with a wood carving I don't know why but people seem to go okay you know it's, a, it's just a different I think like brain saying, brain. it's a physical thing though they can touch it they can see every stroke that you yeah. made Whereas a painting, it's flat. They don't know how long you work to get to that point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's just yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And so I think yeah, it's this weird little way of working that yeah can be can be a living, which is mm-hmm. um, my mind. <laughs> yeah. No, it's amazing. Do you carve most of your stuff that trees that were like cut down? and that are left up is that most of your okay predominantly I mean I quite like the idea of um having a studio um and working you know when it's like because the summer months are amazing to carve in but it is really sad in the winter and I think it'd be really fun to have a bit of a hybrid way of yeah. working whether it's um you know commissions not attached to the floor and ones that are and kind of make the the two work side by side but um all in good time yeah yeah is your space at the house or no you have to get like an actual studio yeah. no i'd have yeah. to go and work in the yard i think um, i do work out of a yard anyway there's a there's um a tree surgery company um called a cut above that i use and i go and work at their yard which is just oh, they're really lovely yeah they're really really super lovely um but mainly it's trees that have had to come down for a perp like a reason like it's unhealthy or you know whatever and then so I'll carve but as a result of that it's often again that's why it's quite an emotional process because they bought the house maybe for the tree or the tree was played their kids played in the tree and yep. climbed around it, you know and it's so for them it's a real symbol of their children's childhood and then mm. it's had to come down and they're like really got I mean I had to do a job recently where the guy, the husband had teed up so the tree got taken down that day and the next day I, I was there to carve because his wife was so distraught that the tree you had to have had a change right away yeah yeah, right. yeah. And she was just she just it just looked like a you know a severed limb to her it was just she just cried and then she cried of happiness when I carved it <laughs> 
it was just and actually so did the neighbor opposite they were both crying oh, after my car that's good friends like right there <laughs> yeah, they were all really gutted about the tree coming down you know i think people do you feel very emotionally connected to them? Thankfully, you should look after the, your trees. For um anybody who's looking into getting into cutting trees like that, that have just been cut yeah. really fresh, wet wood, what are your recommendations for them? Like just any tips and tricks that you've learned? If there's, you, because chainsaws are so powerful, you don't have to, you know, uh, wait any period of time particularly because it can That's just, good. it just, yeah, it's fine just to do. It will dry out and crack a lot. And I think if you, once you've oiled it loads, it sort of slows a bit, slows okay. down the drying process. And if you draw, you know, as much oil as possible. But this is one of those things you can you can carve it straight away, which is great. For, for yeah. burrs, do they need to have like a more of a coarse burr or? I t yeah, I tend to, yeah, I do okay. tend to use quite a coarse burr, burr, burr anyway, because yeah, it's just quite big. A lot of the stuff as I do is quite big. So I feel they were like little fines going to take you weeks yeah <laughs> so I just say you get to a point as well we have to go you, I'm, I'm calling it I'm done you yeah. know what I mean you, you could spend like four more days but you know at some point you have to go okay I'm gonna mm. stop <laughs> I mean I think that's a it's a hard thing for everyone to that stopping point like when is it done and when when is it too far like because you can overwork yeah. something and yeah, 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 yeah. you can't yeah. put that material back it's like yeah <laughs> yeah that's true i have actually done that before i've been like so focused on trying to get the angle of something right that i look back and i'm like it's unstable i've cut so much away uh -oh. i've just made it like it's gonna basically top it you know what i mean because you, mm -hmm. you get so in the mood that you're like yeah that, look, that must look right and it's then you're so like oh. yeah 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 <laughs> that was a while back but <laughs> I've learned more. <laughs> exactly. You have to make those mistakes when you're learning. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because like now it's like a, there's all those conversations going on side by side. Like where's the strength of the tree? Where's the weight going? You know, what can you remove? What can you leave? You know, they've got mm -hmm. to kind of balance out the aesthetic versus, you know, structural integrity and, and everything, you know, so you've got to think of all of those. Is there something that you really, really want to carve? Like you're hoping to get commissioned to do? Um, I well, I just yeah, I well, I just love up. I love doing abstracts. Abstract. I really, really love doing abstract stuff. Um, and spending time getting playing with the shadow and light, and you know, so making something that looks very simple but actually has got different. Right edges that kind of pick up and cast shadows and stuff so I think yeah I'm gonna try and put that into my um commissions I, I always try and put a bit of that on some of the bases or you know try and play with it but yeah I'd love to do a proper full carving where it was all about edges and casting shadows that's neat I can see that in like a museum outside and like, like an outdoor like area do you know what I mean so people just walk yeah, around yeah. and admire it well, that's the thing about carve or sculptures in general is yeah. like it's it is a physical thing because either they're so small that you feel big or they're so big that you feel <laughs> true small or, you know there's that kind of physical it makes you aware of yourself by being in front of them mm -hmm. you know and it's that interaction of you being you being with it that's that makes the sculpture come alive no i agree yeah yeah it's it it is completely interactive it's immersive like because you're mm -hmm. there and yeah you're, yeah you said you're comparing yourself towards it absolutely and you get why does my husband when they like say you can't touch it i'm like that's all you want to do every sculpture <laughs> i ever see, I'm like i just want to touch it i don't know why you know but yeah. there is that need to physically interact with it somehow isn't there Mm -hmm. we i don't know if you listened to the one that came out yesterday but <laughs> we talked about that it was just how like when it comes to carving, we we do we're we're making these things because we want somebody to run their hands against. Yeah, them. So yeah, yeah. Feel it, yeah. You know? And yeah. wood does that a lot. You realize actually, like people without noticing will just put the, they'll it, just yeah. rest their hands. On it. Yeah, and they, it just is something. I mean, we carvings of wooden carvings have been like part of our history since we began as people yeah. you know mm -hmm. it's something that's been done forever there's something so intrinsic in our you know in our it's we're so connected to
sculpture in general, but also, yeah. you know, wooden yeah. sculptures. That, and there seems to be, or wood in general, it's that kind of, yeah, na- it's just within it's us. natural. No, yeah, absolutely. I think that must be why people love carving, like, spoons. Mm. Because it just feels right. Like, I carved my first one the other day, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, all right, I can see the appeal. All right, that's addicting. Because now I want to shape yeah. a new one. I want to see how different I can make the next one. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh. what kind of a spoon did you go for? Did you go for an eating spoon or a, like a stirring, a serve, like a serve, or like something you would serve salad with or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. Just- something of a decent size I didn't want to go too small and be like nicking my fingers like on my first thing <laughs> but I do like I want to do like a coffee scoop next or something, or something. oh nice yeah that's Practical. a good one yeah I think yeah, yeah. I'm like if you went to a fair or like a, a big makers camp thing what would yeah. you want to come home with and like something yeah that, like, something you could use every day like a coffee spoon I think that would be pretty cool like yeah I think something. You, something. yeah d- definitely definitely I think those are somebody I heard once said like you need to spend money on the things that you touch every day mm-hmm. you know so like you could spend on like I don't know cupboard doors or whatever but like the handles make them good you know yeah, and I think it's things like things like you know and same with like having handmade things that if especially within your home if there are things that you use every day they're like I think it just brings you a lot of joy I agree well thank you for coming out and hanging out with me I appreciate it thank you for having me yeah do you have anything that you want to talk about coming up besides obviously season two of kings of the world wood I almost said world (laughs) kings of the world (laughs) um no, I just got loads of co- really fun commissions coming up, so I'll be posting them up when when they happen, and I can't wait to so- like share some of the other stuff. But yeah, I've got loads of. Um, I'm booked up pretty much till like February now, so I've got loads of Love fun it. stuff kind of coming out. So yeah, I'll be sharing it soon. I'm excited. Please, yeah, please keep tagging us. I love it. It's nice. And I love how it, like you guys do share in the community and stuff. Like I think that it builds that um feeling of community and it shares that you know I think we all need to find new people and find like other people's work and stuff and it's, it's so great guys on the show had seen or heard of Sabertooth or the yeah. birds and because I had them all they were like all trying them and they were like oh okay yeah. that's yeah. great you know and so it, it, it's really good for other people to see mm-hmm. it but you know, it also when you're trying to achieve an end goal of what you're making it's like if you suddenly find this new tool you're like oh my god it makes my life so much easier yeah i look forward to talking with you more have a great Thanks day you so much you're welcome see you see ya. Bye-bye. See you. bye bye all right i hope you enjoyed getting to know ella she is an amazing talent and she is ella fielding sculpture on instagram so go check her out and check out her show if you're able to get it download discovery plus and you'll be able to watch it and i just want to say a huge thank you to uh, miller's rustic sawmill and forest the home they're donating some amazing wood for us to carve at the makers camp this october in the catskills so come check us out we're going to have some great wood we've got some amazing tools donated to us by works tools and then we're going to have over a hundred burrs to play with I've already checked these all out. We've got every grit you can think of, all kinds of different styles. So it's going to be a lot of fun and Sabretooth is not holding back. We're gonna have goodies, we're gonna have hats and all kinds of stuff. So come say hi. The first people that come visit us will get the most. So be sure to come and check it out. Have a great day.